This is video two of lecture six, case control and cohort studies. In this video, we're going to focus on cohort studies. So as case control studies might be prone to recall biases, we decide to conduct a cohort study instead. We identify two hospitals which operated in the early 1900s. One of the hospitals had an all providers wash hands policy and the other had a no providers are allowed to wash hands policy. In this way, we're able to identify patients who've had their outcome following exposure to hospital providers. So if we go back to our hierarchy of evidence, we see cohort studies here above case control studies and quality of evidence still below randomized control trials, but it's going to be the best study design for our question. So a cohort study is an observational study in which two groups, the exposed patients and the unexposed patients, are followed until the development of the outcome of interest. So if we review the cohort classification, these studies are analytical because they are designed to assess a relationship. Cohort studies can be prospective or retrospective, so we can use new or existing exposure and outcome data. Like case controls, these are quasi-experimental because groups are chosen based on pre-existing differences between patients. However, patients are assigned to groups based on exposure. Cohort studies, like case controls, are useful to study relationships in large populations when RCTs are not feasible. In all cohort studies, exposure should precede the effect. So if we review the causality assessment of cohort studies, again, because it's observational, there's no experimentation, we're not intervening, we're providing any th treatment for those patients. Uh, cause, we could look at cause preceding effect, and we can also look at individual associations. So if we plug in our um, information from our study into this flowchart. Again, our sample is pregnant women, but now we're grouping the women based on their exposure. So we've got pregnant women in the clean hospital, which is they're exposed to the hand washing policy. And then we've got pregnant women in the dirty hospital. So they're not exposed to the um, hand washing. And then we're gonna compare mortality. So strengths of cohort studies, especially useful when the exposure of interest is rare. Um, we've already mentioned this, but it's capable of drawing comparisons between groups, and we can be more certain that the cause precedes the effect. Weaknesses, not randomized, and it is also vulnerable to selection bias. So in cohort studies, we use relative risk, and so you have a little bit more experience with relative risk, so a lot of this is going to be review for you. But as a reminder, relative risk describes the strength of the relationship between exposure and disease occurrence. So here's the equation for the relative risk. First, we calculate the incidence in the hand washing group, which in our example is 27%. Then we calculate the incidence in the non hand washing group, which is 40%. And to get the relative risk, we're going to divide 0.27 divided by 0.4, and we get a relative risk of 0.68. But now, just like in our odds ratio, what do we do with this number? How, what does this mean? So this slide is going to be almost identical to the uh, interpreting odds ratio slide. If the rel relative risk equals 1, this means that the risk of outcome in the exposed is the same as or similar to the risk of outcome in unexposed. The outcome is not associated with the exposure. If the relative risk is greater than 1, the risk of the outcome in the exposed is greater than the risk of outcome in unexposed, meaning that the exposure may be a risk factor for the outcome. And if the relative risk is less than 1, risk of outcome in exposed is lower than the risk of outcome in unexposed. So the exposure might be a protective factor against the outcome. So here, the only difference between really this slide and the interpreting odds ratio is that in relative risk, we're looking at risk of outcome. In odds ratio, we're looking at odds. So we've got our relative risk of 0.68. What does this mean? So we're going to do what we did in our example for the odds ratio. So here we know that relative risk less than 1, risk of outcome is in exposed is lower than the risk of outcome in unexposed. So we're going to convert this 
relative risk value into a percentage. So we're going to do 1 minus the relative risk times 100, and we get 32%. And just like in the odds ratios um, video, if your relative risk is greater than 1, you would do relative risk minus 1 times 100 to get your percentage. So now I know this is how I interpret it. There's a 32% decrease in the risk of death in patients being cared for by a provider who washes their hands compared to patients cared for a provider who does not. So now we're going to look at some common cohort biases. The first one being exposure selection bias. So if there are differences in the population selected for the exposure group results in biased ex association between exposure and outcomes. So for instance, the no hand wash hospital probably has a lot more issues than the clean hospital besides that one policy. There's also the um, risk of attrition bias. So differences in dropout rate related to the exposure or outcome. So for instance, pregnant women may leave dirty hospital early once they realize it has a no hand wash policy, thus removing them at high rates from the study. If we compare the advantages of cohort and case control study, we see that in cohort studies, it directly estimates relative risks and risk differences. It's good for studying rare exposures, and you can study multiple outcomes since you're not selecting patients uh, with an outcome, especially like, selecting them on exposure. It's less prone to recall biases. There's more opportunity to validate measures if it's prospective. And there's less directional ambiguity. So you can usually ensure that cause precedes effect. On the other hand, advantages of case control studies, they're typically quicker and less expensive to conduct. Here, instead of studying rare exposures, we can study rare outcomes. And, we can also, and with that, we can study multiple exposures. We can study outcomes with a long latency period because we're identifying patients who already have the outcome, so we don't have to wait for the outcome to develop in order to um, study them. So what do you need to know? Things to study for the next class. First, know the major differences between the cohort and case control studies, when each is preferred, differences in study design, and causal criteria. Be able to calculate and interpret odds ratios and relative risk. So remember, if it's a case control, you're going to calculate an odds ratio. If it's a cohort, you're calculating a relative risk. So first step, once you calculate your relative risk or odds ratio, is we're going to convert it into a percentage. So this is the first step in interpretation. So if the relative risk or odds ratio is greater than 1, then the relative risk or odds, then you're going to do take the relative risk my, or the odds ratio minus 1 times 100. If the relative risk or odds ratio is less than 1, then you're going to do 1 minus the relative risk or odds ratio times 100. This is going to give you a percentage. So I created this little template, interpretation template, where you can kind of plug in the uh, specific information into uh, these different variables indicated with letters A, B, C, D, E, F enclosed in brackets, okay? So the A variable um, you will put, if it's a cohort study, you're going to put the relative risk percentage value in there. If it's a case control study, you're going to take the odds ratio percentage value and input it. For, the, for variable B, if the relative risk or odds ratio is greater than 1, then input the word increased. If relative risk or odds ratio is less than 1, then put in the word decreased. For variable C, if relative risk, input risk. If you're using odds ratio, input odds. D, variable D is going to be where you're going to um, input your exposure, what your specific exposure is. E is going to be the exposure, and F is going to be the unexposed or non-exposed. So let me show you what this means. So here's the template. And so we're going to plug in our information from our study for the case control first. So the odds ratio was 0.56. So if I plug in my information, it looks like this. There is a 46% decreased odds of death in patients being cared for by a provider who washes their hands compared to patients cared for by a provider who doesn't wash their hands. And in the case of a cohort study, 
it would look like this. There is a 32% decreased risk of death in patients being cared for by a provider who washes their hands compared to patients cared for by a provider who doesn't wash their hands. So this template can work for either relative risk or odds ratio. And then lastly, we want you to be able to identify common biases in each type of study design. So recall and reporting biases are more common in case control studies.